Please be seated. I would like to welcome you families who are visiting this morning for a family weekend, visiting your student. Um, welcome to St. Paul's, and um, if your student is with you because they are part of the University Fellowship here at St. Paul's, welcome. And if you are here simply because you go to church on Sunday and your student may or may not be coming with you, um, there's some information right in the pew rack that you can take back to them. We have a very vibrant undergraduate ministry. They can come back tonight at 645 for a, a good, healthy, free meal and uh, worship at 730. I have been a pastor for a long time. And I have seen a lot of human suffering. Too much to not be wary when a healing story rises in the lectionary for us to hear. I'm exhausted by the facile argument that if you just have enough faith in God, God's going to heal you. I have seen people of deep faith die. That idea just often spirals off when people don't get healed. It just leads to this spiral of anger and guilt and shame. It doesn't take us anywhere that is remotely healthy or healing. It seems to me that these stories are about something else. That instead of telling us what God might do for us personally, they are telling us what we might be able to do together. Maybe these stories are not about the healing of individual bodies. Maybe they're signposts. Maybe they're arrows that point in a direction, tell us about a place that we might go together as humankind. And if that is the case, then this story about Bartimaeus is more about his movement from the ditch on the side of the road to the center of the crowd than it is about him regaining his sight. In fact, so long as we make it about Bartimaeus and him and Jesus and getting his sight, we are going to miss the most important thing that this story has to teach us, which is this. That we as a society, we put up these barriers between people and their well-being. We put up blockades between people and the fullness of their humanity. And if we really dig deep, we might find that we're invested in them staying by the side of the road. You heard the story, you know how it goes. Bartimaeus, blind man, sitting by the side of the road. He hears that Jesus is passing by. He cries out, Jesus, have mercy on me. People around, instead of saying, oh, there's Bartimaeus, let's usher him into the presence of Jesus, that symbolic place of healing and wellness. Instead of doing that, Mark tells us many, not one, not two, not three, many sternly ordered him to be quiet. We know what that means, right? <laughs> they told him to shut up. Bartimaeus receives his sight Jesus is ambiguous about how this happens. He says to Bartimaeus, go, your faith has healed you. That word healed can mean be made whole physically, can be mean made whole uh, spiritually, can mean salvation, being saved. Your faith has put your life back together somehow. Jesus doesn't say this is an act of God. He leaves it ambiguous. Maybe. Just maybe. And when you know when I say maybe, I re mean probably. <laughs> the faith that Jesus names in Bartimaeus was a faith in the way things could be. Maybe it was a faith in this larger, divinely inspired vision of human wholeness and well-being. Maybe Bartimaeus, as blind as he was, saw what the others around him did not see. Maybe he had faith of where we might go together 
as humankind. The most disturbing part of this story is where, is the part where there are people who prevent Bartimaeus from experiencing that wholeness. They're putting a barrier between him and that place of well-being. I don't know why they did it. I have some ideas. You can speculate. You probably have some ideas of why they did it. But we know that it was real, that they did do it. And it's ugly. And as uncomfortable as it is for me to say this, and as disturbing as it is to hear this, and I'm just trusting that we have this trust between us, we do this all the time. We. And by we, I mean people, those of us with formal and informal means of economic and political power. We don't tell people to shut up. We get angry when other people do that, when they treat the poor with disrespect. I think that we genuinely care for people who are marginalized, that they're on the side of the road. I think that we, our heart is in the right place and we want them to experience the fullness and wholeness that God would have for them. We don't tell people to shut up directly. We do it indirectly by benefiting from a system that is rigged in our favor. We tell people to shut up and to stay in their place mostly through financial and economic policies. Inventing these opaque systems, intransigent institutions and policies that are partial to people with wealth and power. We hardly ever ask how the dividend was made before we cash the check. Whenever we start talking about these large financial systems, the conversation almost always turns to a series of yeah buts. Yeah, but son, you don't understand financial institutions. Yeah, but those are restricted funds. Yeah, but if we didn't do it this way, we wouldn't be able to give people the jobs that they do have. I get it's complicated. I know that. But this yeah, but is just another form of power. And it sounds to me an awful lot like many sternly ordered him to be quiet. The only way this system changes is if we change it. The people who created it and who benefit from it. We have got to go beyond feeling guilty about our privilege. We have got to go beyond marches, beyond policing the language, beyond performative acts of solidarity and get into the long, hard, complicated, sacrificial work of systemic change. So this all sounds so big and abstract. So let me bring it home. Over the past year, the past year, as I don't need to tell you this, you know it, has been one of the most difficult crises in modern history. People at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder have suffered the worst. In this past year of crisis, the University of Virginia's endowment grew by 49%. 49%. Went from $9.9 .9 billion to $13.7 billion. It's a gain of $4.5 billion in one year. The wealthy got significantly wealthier. I want to believe that there are some people in a room somewhere at the university talking about how we might take some of that money and put it to work in the larger community working towards equity. I also know enough about the way the world works to know that there are other people in another room somewhere talking about bond ratings and securing the investment for the future, protecting the assets. Just as a benchmark for us, a reference point, 
If you take the top 10 historic black colleges and universities in America, take the top 10, you add up all of their endowments put together, it's just over $2 billion. Right across the street is an unprecedented consolidation of wealth that will only exacerbate the inequities and divisions with our community, within our community. Justice will not come to this place while there are such grotesque inequalities. We have power. We have power in this room. Students, the university listens to students more than anyone else. Students, parishioners here, people of faith, members of this larger community, we have the power to engage the university in a conversation about how we might move from token millions invested into the community to tide-changing billion. I'm a preacher, not a financial advisor. You can probably see why. <laughs> I'm not an economist, I'm not a university president, but I can't get it out of my mind and I'm not going to let you get it out of your mind either that they told Bartimaeus to shut up. He was the only one who could really see. He was the one who could see through their opposition. He could see through their fear. He could see through their yeah, but, and he saw and he spoke out even when everyone around him tried to tell him to shut up. Having faith in God's vision for human wholeness, God's vision for human well-being means that we need to do the hard work of dismantling the systems that prevent people from experiencing it. And it takes faith. Faith that that vision can become a reality. And that is the faith that Jesus names in Bartimaeus when he says, go, your faith has made you well.